Hello and welcome to another video. I want to talk about in this video something that you never really think about. I had it happen to me in the past many, many years ago and I was determined not to let it happen again. What I'm talking about is seeing the screen on my computer do this. And we all know when it happens, most likely all your data is bye-bye. Well, I was determined not to let that happen. And I came up with a way to get that resolved. One of these right here. They come in different sizes, not, the, not only just a physical size, but the capability of actually how much data it can actually handle. This is a five terabyte external hard drive. You plug in your power, which goes right here. Then your USB port cord goes right there and it plugs into USB 3.0. You don't have to open up your computer to mount the hard drive, do any wiring, anything like that. You plug it in the wall, plug it into USB, even works on 2.0, so you don't have to have 3.0. It's just faster if you actually have 3.0 on your computer. And you can tell if you have it or not. If it's when the, where you plug in at, if it's not blue, it's 2.0. If it's blue, it's 3.0. Only thing difference will be the speed that it can transfer data from the external hard drive from your computer. Now I have one on my computer here in the studio. The reason why I don't have just one, I have actually two of these because if we have a power search and it gets into the computer, it can transfer itself right on into the cord of the USB that goes to the external hard drive and it can take out all of it. So I have a router that has USB port on it as well, like this. This one actually has two. One is 3.0, as you can see it's blue. This one is not but both of them will work. So I can actually plug in two of these external hard drives into the router. And if you wonder why you want a router and be able to plug in external hard drives into your router, because if you have the right router, most of them do if it has USB port, you can actually access the external hard drives that's plugged into it from any of your computers that's plugged in to your router. So you can have software on your computer that you tell it to back up your hard drive on your computer, the OS, the uh, other hard drives you may have in there that hold data, whatever, if you do uh, video editing and stuff like that, where you save your raw footage possibly. You could tell it to back up each one of them hard drives to the external hard drives that's plugged into your router. And if your computer ever crashes, or if you just need a certain file off of the external hard drive for some reason, because the one on computer is corrupted, log into your router, find the file, copy, paste it to where the one on the computer is corrupted and replace it with a good one. Another feature I like about this one here, and there is a link to this device in the description below this video. Not only you can access it from the computers that's plugged into the router or even wirelessly, as long as they're not on the guest um, network. It also 
will give you the capability to access these hard drives, one or two, depends on your router, remotely. So if you're sitting at a coffee shop, oh man, I needed that uh, text file um, or the slideshow presentation, the video clip, photos, whatever it may be, as long as it's on here, you can sit at the coffee shop, log into this device, and get all them files to the coffee shop through the internet. So you can continue to do your work without actually have to go back to the house or back to your office, wherever the hard drives are located. If you want to share some files off of the external hard drive, you can give that information out with a user name and password and just let them get the data that you want them to have. And you can um, give them access to the data whenever you, you prefer them to actually access it. After they get the data, you can delete that account or whatever, and they have no access to your device anymore. It's so nice to be able to do that. And the main reason why I have it set up this way, as I mentioned earlier, the big blue screen if it ever happens which less than 24 hours ago from making this video I got that screen and I'm using Windows 10 it says a file is corrupted and it cannot continue booting so I went in there and tried to fix the booting files so I can actually get back into Windows. After 45 minutes to an hour, I was not successful. I said, okay, let's see if all this effort that I put into this backup to save my data and get my system back up and running. I have the whole OS hard drive all the programs, everything backed up every 24 hours. And it does it. I think I got it scheduled for like two or three o'clock in the morning. I thought that's when I was not going to be on a computer, but there's many times I'm sitting here editing videos or making a video and it starts to do a backup. So I said, well, pretty much I'm going to be here almost all the time, at least some time of the day. So, but the thing is, the program I use does not use hardly any resources. So it really didn't bog down the system. And the way I got this system to build it, it's going to take a lot to bog it down anyway. But the issue was my system was not working. Now it's time to test all that hard work and see if this actually was worth putting together to save my computer. I boot it up on the disk. Depends on which software you use to do your backup. Be sure it has capability of making a recovery disk. That way you can actually boot up on the CD or DVD, whichever it may take, and be able to do a recovery. I put the disk in. It asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, restore. And I looked for the restore partition that it actually backed up last time. I looked into the network, logged in, found the file that it backed up last, told it to take that and put it on the hard drive where the OS is, put it back to that format, which was less than 24 hours ago when it made that image. It took roughly about 45 minutes to take that image and put it back on the hard drive on the computer. With all fingers crossed, it shut down. I was hesitant if it was going to work or not as 
Hopefully I did not make a mistake of installing and setting everything up correctly. Now, of course, you can take your hard drive out and get all your data off of it, then wipe your hard drive and put Windows back on it and all that. But anybody that's ever done that, you know how much tedious of a task and time consuming that can be. Just the doing the updates alone is enough. So I pushed the power button. It came up, the DOS, the screen continued going surpassed the time frame of when it, the blue screen came up then the windows logo appeared on the middle of the screen then my desktop photo that i had as my screen background showed up on all four of my screens it continued then the icons in the toolbar down at the bottom started to show up. The clock showed up. The speaker showed up. The menu showed up. And after roughly about a minute after it started, after I pushed that button, it was all booted up. And it's been working ever since. As if nothing ever went wrong. The only drawback on doing that the way I have it is any data that I have on there from the time it backed up last time is going to be lost because it wipes out the hard drive completely. Now, some software you can set up so it will only replace whatever is messed up. You can set it up that way. But if I ever have any data as say for this instant, if I had data on there that I did not want to lose, all I have to do is unplug the hard drive out of the computer, plug it into a USB uh, patch cord, and plug it into the laptop, access the hard drive, and go get that data off of there. But there was nothing on there that I needed. You never know when things can go wrong on electronics. I mean, you can build it to the best of your ability with the best parts out there, but if it's electronics, eventually it's going to crash. And if you do content, especially videos, and you like to keep your raw footage or the final product, if you have raw footage and you make your video out of it after edit and everything, and you like just to keep the final video, which that's what I do. It's on here. I don't keep my raw footage. I back it up. I back it up on one of these that's plugged into the computer, and then it takes uh, three, two or three o'clock in the morning, it takes this drive and copies it 100% to the one that's on my server, which is on my router, which is in the room over there somewhere, about a good 25 feet away. So if that crashes... Then I have it on my computer. If my computer crashes in this incident is what happened. I have it on the server. Always like to have at least two copies of everything. So if one crashes, then I have another. Don't be left out in the dark of pushing your power button or working on your computer. And all of a sudden you get the blue screen. Pretty much there's a good chance if you don't have a backup. It's too late. You possibly lost everything unless you be able to access that hard drive some other way. Sometimes when a hard drive crashes, sometimes it's not the disk itself. It can be the board on the hard drive itself that crashed and it will not let you get access to the data itself. So, don't lose your data just because you're not willing to have a backup. And they do have these in portable as well. Uh, let's see what size they have. As of right now on Amazon, and like I said, the link is in the description below. They have one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, and even eight terabyte. Even, let's see, portable, uh, four terabyte. 
So they have a portable hard drive that's four, ter- four terabyte. This one's five. Actually, now I think about it, I got a five, and they don't have a five on here. They got one, two, four, and eight. I don't see the five listed, but it has been over a year since I brought these two because they had a special buy two and you get so much off. But it's always good to have backup. And the back, the best way to have backup is three, two, one is what I believe in. Three copies of all your data, two copies of it locally where you're actually producing the or working on the data, one remotely somewhere else, three copies of all, two locally, one remotely somewhere else. I mean, you can even, if you got a friend that would not mind you plugging this into their router and you set up a account on there that you could access remotely, then you can get your software to actually back up your data through the internet to your friend's house onto your external hard drive that's plugged into their router. And you can plug in a router in your place and put an external hard drive. They can back up their data on your router and you can back up your data on their router. So that gets that off-site data for both of you. So one hand washes the other, they say. One hand scratches, you know, the back of the other, you know. So don't be left out in the dark and get that blue screen and lose everything that you work for. It's no fun of putting in a new hard drive, installing Windows, doing the updates. Then you got to start installing all your software. And if you got any software that has a license key on it, There's a possibility you might not be able to install that without getting up with them and getting another key that you actually may have to actually purchase. Some software, you can only uh, install it three times before you cannot use that key again. And if you already, if you installed it on three items, you know, two laptops or two computers and a laptop, you're maxed out. So if one of them crashes, you try to reinstall Windows, put that software back on, use the same key, and you're already maxed out. And you're already maxed out. And you're already maxed out. You have to get up with them. They might be able to give you a key to make it work or tell that, make that key work one more time. Or they're going to say, sorry, maximum is three. You're going to have to purchase another key. And I don't know how much that is. Depends on what the software is. So do not lose your data. Have it backed up. I'm glad I did. This is only the second time that I ever had the computer to crash on me. And the first time, I just wiped it out because I didn't have nothing on there except, you know, just the basic stuff. I wasn't really doing content. This was back in the 90s. But I put something in place then to be sure if it ever happened again. I wouldn't have to worry about wiping it all out and, you know, put everything back individually. It put everything back, but it put it all back in less than an hour. It crashed and I was back up online making videos two hours or less. It crashed and two hours later, I was back as if nothing happened. That's a win to me. It would take me more than two hours just to put Windows on it and do all the updates. Then I have to install all my software, which I have over 130 programs on my computer. Uh Uh-uh. I'm not going to sit there for two or three days trying to put that stuff back together because they're going to have to do updates as well. Because the software you have, when you installed it, all the updates that's been updated since then will have to be updated just like Windows. Not worth the headache. Get you a backup. Regardless how big it is, it don't have to be four, five, eight terabyte. Depends on how much data you need to back up. Of course, you can use Google Drive and all that, but there's a limitation on that. You can use that as a third one off-site. If you got a good enough internet speed, use it as the third one. So if your computer crashes, put all your computer back together, log into Google, download your data. That's the third one you can use if you want. Like I said, do 
yourself a favor and get yourself a backup. It don't have to be this one, but this one is over a year. I think it's a year and matter of fact, it'd be a year and four months next month. And I have two of them and I have not had any issue with them. I probably will change it out next, next year sometime before it actually crashes. Because I got some uh, hard drives that did not crash and I changed them out anyway just so I won't have that headache. And I write on it, no crash. That means I took it out before it crashed. That means if I need one, I know I can still use it. Just like if I take this one right now and I'll go buy another one, I'm going to write on the bottom of it, put a little sticker, no crash. That way when I store this, when I pull it out, I say, well, it never crashed. So I know it's still probably good then I can use it for something. Like if I need to transfer a whole big of videos or whatever at one time, I plug this in, I know it was good, it never crashed, plug it in, transfer it from one computer to another, whatever I need to do. It's just things you put in place to cover yourself from losing all your data. Hopefully this helps somebody. Don't forget to uh, look in the description, you'll see a link to it. And uh, if you hadn't already, consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that bell notification. And if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And if you do not like this video, for some reason, hit the thumbs down. But I just ask, get up with me one way or the other, email, text, or in the comments why you do not like it and see if we can make videos better so it would be suitable and more enjoyable and more informative to you. And that's what we're here for. So until next time, stay safe. And take care.